That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4 You will hear a talk from a member of the Conservation Society talking about green cleaning. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here as a representative of the Conservation Society to talk to you about green cleaning. In other words, about ways you can help to save the environment at the same time as saving money. I'll start with saving money. As we're all interested in that, especially students who are living on a tight budget. Probably none of you has sat down and calculated how much you spend on cleaning products each year. Everything from dishwashing detergent, window cleaners and so on, through to shampoos and conditioners for your hair. And then those disasters products to get stains out of carpets, or to rescue burnt saucepans. I can see some nods of agreement. Even if you don't spend a lot of time on housework, you'd end up spending quite a lot of money over a period of time, wouldn't you? We can save money on products and also use products which are cheap, biodegradable and harmless to the environment. These I will call green products. Unfortunately, most cleaning products on sale commercially are none of these, and many of our waterways and oceans are polluted with bleach, dioxins, phosphates, and artificial colorings and perfumes. Also, think how many plastic bottles each household throws away over a year. They'll still be around in landfill when you are grandparents. So we often feel there's nothing we can do to make a difference, but we can. The actual recipes are on handouts you can take at the end of the talk. The sorts of ingredients I'm referring to are things like bicarbonate of soda, eucalyptus oil, ammonia, vinegar, lemons, pure soap. Lastly, many people find they are allergic to modern products. So for all you asthma sufferers, keep listening. Nothing in these recipes should cause you any problems. An end to itching and wheezing. So let's start with spills and stains. Soda water is wonderful as an immediate stain remover. Mop up the excess spill, don't rub, but apply soda water immediately. It's great for tea, coffee, wine, beer and milk, as is salt or bicarbonate of soda, which will absorb the stain. Then vacuum when dry and shampoo if necessary. While we're talking about disasters, let's quickly look at some others that can be avoided. Bicarbonate of soda is wonderful for removing smells, especially in the fridge. An open box in the fridge will eliminate smells for up to three months. 
and those terrible burnt saucepans. Either sprinkle with our good friend bicarb again and leave it to stand, or cover with vinegar and a layer of cooking salt. Bring it to the boil and simmer for 10 minutes, then wash when cool. Much cheaper than a new saucepan. Then there are heat rings on wooden furniture. Simply rub with a mixture of salt and olive oil, or for scratched furniture, use olive oil and vinegar. Now, let's look at general cleaning. First, the floors. If your floor covering is made of slate, cork or ceramic tiles or lino, it probably only needs a mop or a scrub with vinegar in a bucket of water. Carpets can be shampooed using a combination of pure soap, washing soda, cloudy ammonia and some boiling water. You put a small amount of this mixture onto the mark on the carpet, rub with a cloth until it lathers and then wipe off the excess. A smelly carpet can be deodorised by sprinkling bicarbonate of soda on the surface, leaving overnight and vacuuming off the next day. Cleaning in the kitchen, bathroom and toilet is the next section. That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.